most black musicians are not part of the black race anymore, you see. Because they, they not really, they don't have no feeling. They're thinking about money. They're thinking about fame. They're thinking about integration. They're not thinking about people, you see. Like other musicians do concerning their people. You, know? you have to play for your people, you see. You have to uh, develop your ethnic structures. And every nation has people in there who can look out for their race to develop the ethnic structures. Without that, any nation can forget it. Don't care how righteous they are, what they are. They don't have the music. If they don't have a philosopher, if they don't have things on a higher plane, they're not going to make it. Sun Ra, writer, poet, and musical pioneer, has been in the music industry some 50 years and has been called a prophet by many. Born in Birmingham, Alabama, he has been greatly influenced by the late jazz artist Fletcher Henderson. Sun Ra's philosophy of music has been identified as being ahead of his time, and the city of Detroit recently paid homage to him by presenting him with the key to the city. After a recent performance at the Detroit Jazz Center, Detroit Black Journal had an opportunity to interview the esteemed Sun Ra. Has jazz ever been played before? Everything on this planet came out of Egypt. And uh, they were playing jazz there. It has always been played because it's, uh, whatever country is based in, it always comes to be the rules of the world. Whatever yeah. the music is, the creativity you see. True jazz is creativity. And it's from people who are specially gifted by the creator. And although a lot of musicians can play the notes, they can't really play jazz. They're saying jazz, but they don't really, they're not playing it. In the black race now, you, may, you might have 50 people who are playing jazz scattered all over the country, all over the world for that matter. They lost it because they were trying to integrate and they lost that ethnic structure, you see. So they, every nation got certain things that they do, like the Scotchman, they play their music and they don't integrate it. And the Africans do that traditional thing. Each nation got its own ethnic thing. They don't integrate it. And the Chinese got that thing, that Chinese opera. They don't integrate it. The Japanese got that samurai and all these different things they do. And they don't integrate it. So then um, when black people lost their um, country and their government, they felt maybe they, if they integrated, they could be accepted by society. But it hasn't happened, and it won't happen because everyone has to have their own government and their own ethnic cultural structures. And until black people get that, they just be like, well, float champ on the ocean of life. They have to have a cultural structure for uh, people to recognize you, know, because they recognize you by your cultural structure. Like sometimes America ain't with Russia, Russia send this ballet over and it's send the culture over and show them, well, um, we're doing something. We believe in beauty. And the Chinese, they send over their Chinese opera. And the Japanese got a lot of films over here. They send their cultural thing. And it, a nation is, they're compelled to recognize that these people are valid and have principle and now, structure. Are you saying that uh, black musicians, especially here in the Western world, are fragmented? Are you saying that we have lost our culture? so to speak, uh, is it in the music? Does it begin with the music in terms of developing uh, uh, our culture? Most black musicians are not part of the black race anymore, you see. Because they, they not really, they don't have no feeling. They're thinking about money. They're thinking about fame. They're thinking about integration. They're not thinking about people, you see. Like other musicians do concerning their people. You, know? you have to play for your people, you see. You have to uh, develop your ethnic structures. And every nation has people in there who can look out for their race to develop the ethnic structures. Without that, any nation can forget it. Don't care how righteous they are, what they are. They don't have the music. If they don't have a philosopher, if they don't have things on a higher plane, they're not going to make it. There was a book called um, From Man to Superman by J. Rogers, I think. And the man was discussing. And he was telling this, this white man about uh, why didn't they recognize black people? Because he, he quoted all, he, he talked, he, uh, 
mentioned all the different men who invented things and did all kinds of things and showed that they were mentally capable. But the man told him, you have, the black race hasn't developed a philosopher yet. And you have to develop a philosopher for it before we recognize you. Yeah. Not die while the black people read that book. Because philosophers determine the fate of nations you take over here. This, this country is based on Aristotle and Plato and Socrates, and they were born somewhere else, but they still teach it in schools. And uh, you take uh, democracy itself. It's based on what a Roman said. I think his name was Marcus Aurelius or something like that. But he was talking about every, all men being brothers and all that. So it's not anything new. Uh, it, uh, it was something that somebody thought of that they would like to make true. However, God didn't make nobody equal, and it can't be done. So, Everyone is different, you see? Just like you go to a tree and you try to find two leaves exactly alike, you won't make it. If you try to find two blades of grass exactly alike, you won't find it. So then it's really against the laws of nature to speak about equality. It's something man thinks should be because of conditions to try to uplift other men. But uh, these people got karma on them, and they got God against them. So if you try to, it says that, well, he, he who's a friend of man is an enemy of God, you know, so a lot of people have died trying to help man because they, they proved to be enemies of God, and he killed them. It's quite simple, you see. But they got this Bible, and they like to think that God is love, and that's blinding them. They have to read what it says. It's got all the facts in there. Now, I understand that you traveled to Egypt several years ago, and I'm just wondering, what did you find? Uh, what was that experience really all about? How did it influence your music? Well, in Chicago, some people saw my name was Ra. They said that the white people said, well, we're not going to recognize until Egypt recognized. If hmm. they do, then we recognize that name. So when I went to Egypt, I had my passport stamped as Ra. And they also told me I was at home and stayed there and don't come back to America. They also told my band, you're at home now, and your ancestors built the pyramids and the Sphinx. We stay here. You belong here. That was some people in the Egyptian government talking. Now, when I went to Mexico, I went to the Egyptian embassy, Mexico City, and they said the same thing when I told them well, over half the black people in America are ancient Egyptians. They said, that's correct. That's the case where I approached government officials, and they knew it. Everybody knows it, but black people over here. Why but, is that, uh, do you think? Uh, is it because we have been, haven't uh, searched it out? Uh, is it because that we've been held back from certain types of information? Is it because the information is distorted? What, what do you think about that? Well, they're too busy trying to integrate with white people, and the white people are different all the beings, you see. They're entirely different all the beings. God made them like that. And they're in a particularly ignorant state because he, he, they don't know too much about things. That's when they search and dig and trying to find out because they know they don't know. But what they were based upon, they thought it was the truth. But you take like England and France, they went over in Egypt digging and digging, and they found out something else. Something that wasn't what they said is true. Egypt got all the answers, you see, on the hieroglyphics. All the answers are in Egypt. That's when you see a lot of American diplomats going to Egypt. President go there. Everybody who's been anybody goes to Egypt in different governments. Because when you go there, you feel something else is there, the ancient and the modern. And you feel it. Because if God ever touched down anywhere on this planet, it was in Egypt, definitely. You go to Egypt, you can feel eternal things. And they were the only people talking about immortality. Of course, Christianity talks about it, too. But they got it from Egypt. So when you talk about, are you saying there's a certain natural law to the universe? Is, 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 is that some of the principles that you've discovered or that you uh, sensitized to? Well, the natural things are taboo, mm -hmm. as far as space people are concerned. Mm -hmm. They say everything down here natural is taboo and to be avoided. And everything supernatural here is to be avoided. Well, that means people have to be completely taught on this plan another way. Because they're right. But right won't help them now. You see, you got a big omniverse. And each 
planet got its own laws. The people here make their laws, and they think that's the law of the cosmos, but it's not. If you got a law that concerns all type of beings, yes. But you just got laws concerning men and women. You mean society concerns dogs and animals, they protection. But do you do you have any protection for angels or other beings that would touch this plant? You see, no one is going to visit here if people are going to uh, resist them because they don't want to hurt anybody. I heard a story about in, uh, some psychics were saying that uh, ships were going to land out west somewhere, and the Commerce Department was there to arrest them if they did land. Because they said they didn't have no, well, the Commerce Department said they didn't have no license to land on planet Earth. So then, if you don't get any visitors, you can see why. That's when they be flying over until you say, well, okay, we need help. It's all right to land. They couldn't be no more dangerous than human beings out of each other. If they're afraid, they shouldn't be. Hmm. What, is, what is the angel race? You, in your, uh, a lot of your concerts, you constantly talk about uh, in your lyrics, the angel race, and you, you said you said from Saturn. Does that have something to do with what you just talked about? Uh, could you kind of explain that? In Nigeria, once I, I saw a newsreel, at least I was in America, but they were showing different facets of different countries. And then they showed a picture of some, some people, some black people in Nigeria. They were standing at the river, dressed in robes, and they said these people said they belong to the angel race. They looked just like black people over here. And then they, uh, they were going through some kind of ceremony. They would take water out of the Atlantic Ocean and put it in a bottle, and they would sprinkle it over the ocean and say, this is for our brothers and sisters who were stolen and taken away across the waters. Mm. Now, their angels, a lot of black people here are angels, but they're going through the ceremony. Now, they call themselves cherubim and seraphim. That's the high order of angels. When I went to Nigeria, I was looking for them. I found them. But I couldn't find the leaders to ask them their questions. And there's a lot of other black people with me, with me who were materialistic, and spiritual beings always hide from that kind. They insisted on going, so I didn't see anybody. So it sounds like you're talking about a, uh, a certain spirituality and uh, uh, what, uh, what we're all about as, as, as human beings. Uh, could you elaborate on that as it relates to your music? What is a musician? What does a musician really do? What is his main function? Well, see, so you got the human race, you got the angel race. Mm. That's why I'm making distinction. Mm. You know, I'm not human because to err is human. I don't be, I don't make my standards making errors. Mm. <coughs> human beings are, it's natural for a human being to make an error. They say so. So why should I be? I'm talking about precision and discipline. Human beings are talking about freedom and other things. It don't concern me. I never had any freedom. <coughs> and I, I never saw anybody else with any. I'm not interested. I've seen a lot of black people get killed talking about freedom and liberty, but I know it's taboo for white people too. In your performances and concerts, you incorporate dancers, uh, musicians, lyricists. Uh, is this an ancient uh, artistic concept, do you think? Uh, are you trying to relate that to a continuous kind of a thing in, 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 in the future? Well, uh, I was personally taught about by the creator of the universe. And I know a lot of things about music, not in books. I also know how to do things to help our nations on this planet. But see, they don't really have no one like me has ever come along. And they don't know what to do about it. I, I do get a lot of publicity in Europe and every other country I go in because they know I'm dealing with something more than music. Mm -hmm. They're beginning to feel it can't be expressed in words. And that's what I'm trying to do, to um, play a superior type of music. Not uh, music dealing with the body, not music dealing with the mind, but music dealing with the spirit, the way it should be. You know, when you deal with music uh, uh, that deals with the spirit, you can encourage people to fight against the bad conditions on this planet. You can encourage them to change things simply by the music. So it's like a motivator. It motivates, stimulates, and compels to turn loose of things that are not profitable. And a lot of things black people are dealing with 
have proven to be not profitable. Of course, they tried to base things on the truth, but the truth is no longer acceptable, you see. Not to the Creator, because when they took Christ and put him on the cross and he said, I'm the truth, they eliminated the truth. You see, you're dealing with cosmic equations, so when he said, I'm the truth, and they crucified him, they crucified truth, it doesn't exist anymore. So you can't use it. If you do, you'll be just like it. So then what you have now, you have got to deal with the myth. Particularly black race, they got to stop everything and realize whatever they're doing is not profitable. Don't care if it's righteous, don't care if it's truth. It's not doing anything. So then they have to deal with something else. Deal with the myth. Now you can take a myth and build a lot of things on it. The white race used the myth of white supremacy. They got a lot to show for it, you know. Of course, a lie. But it makes no difference, you know. You can take a lie, and they got a lot to show for it. All the technology and all these things, that was based on a lie. However, black people got a lot of things that are true. They have nothing to show. Say for instance, I'm from the creator of the universe. And I tell black people, now show me what you developed. What do you own? What did you create that's yours? Ain't gonna have anything, because if they created something, the white race took it. So they don't own anything, you know? Um, they got to face facts and see that the facts are bad. They got to face the truth and reject it. Of course, they've been taught something else. They got to not deal with justice, truth, none of that. It's not going to help. When they're up under the jurisdiction of God, really, and when you get over there, you don't have any freedom. They will have none. Angels don't have any. So if they're looking for to be free, they're going to have to see God himself, and I wouldn't recommend it. The best thing they can do now is to deal with the word discipline for the sake of their children. A lot of black children walking around here with no future. And you can't, like I talk to a lot of people in schools, and they say you can't teach them anything. Why can't you? Because you're not teaching them right. That's why they have to be taught differently from a white child. It's simple. Black children have to be taught with uh, Egyptian standards, ancient Egyptian standards. You got to have hieroglyphics, you got to have a little mystery in it. You got to have statues, and then they can look at the statue, like the white race got this justice blindfold. They can tell that children what it means if they ask. Well, they got a lot of statues everywhere. They still got statues of uh, Mercury, the Wayne Hills, and they got a lot of myth around them, you know. They're not dealing with the truth. Mm -hmm. they, the Rome was built up on myths, and Greece was built up on myths, and ancient Egypt was based up on myths, you see? And you go in any European country, they got their myths. But you come to black people in America and say, okay, show me your myths. How many do they have? None. Then they got a vacuum and a void in their life that's different from other nations. They should correct it speedily. Mm -hmm. But you know, I'm dealing with the myth that I'm an angel. Because I don't feel like no human being. I know things they don't know. I know all kind of things. Mm -hmm. I even got the keys to the Bible. I know what it means. Nobody else knows that. And I'm not righteous either. I'm wicked and evil. Which gives every wicked and evil person a chance. I, I saw in the early days that the righteous black people weren't making it, you know. And I watched them as they died. But I met some wonderful good black people, they all hit the dirt. In every case, you see, they hit the dirt. They say the good die young, you know. The evil men do linger on after. So then, black people got to deal with equations. Now, in every, every dictionary in the world, they say black is evil. So I'm not resisting it. I say so too. I know I can't be black and be good. I know I can't be right, uh, black and be right, because white is right. I'm, so I'm not resisting the white race anything they say. If they say all the black people should leave Michigan, I say, sure, let's go to Egypt. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm saying probably would be better for the white race if everybody black left America. And then we'll see. see. I think they could, I think they'd, make, they'd be better off right now because, you see, they got to take, catch up technical and technical things. Black children don't know too much about words. 
And now, their parents don't know too much about it either. They read the words, you see. Very important. You got to study those words because the Bible said, take words, my people, and return to me. You take these words and you put them together. You keep on putting them together. You come up with the real truth concerning you. Then the nations will turn you loose. You can have your government. It's waiting for you. Also, the money in the World Bank waiting for you. Billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. If you can prove that you're the one supposed to have it. If you're Pharaoh's people, you can get this money out the World Bank. That they put that for you. It's almost like seek and you shall find. You well, yeah, you, you know, you got the, everybody got World Bank been in existence a long time. Mm -hmm. And different rulers put money over in there. Let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, how you began. People like Duke Ellington and Fletcher Henderson, I understand, have influenced your work greatly. And I'm just wondering in what way. Well, well my whole family was black-minded. <clears throat> so... And when I was a child, they was playing nothing but Bess Smith, Harris Smith, Mamie Smith, Ethel Waters. They never played no white music for me. And all the time, I don't even know what's happening. But that's what I was hearing. And every week, some different black performers would come to town, they would take me. So I saw Bessie Smith in person. I saw, I saw Ma Rain in person. I saw everybody. And uh, I really didn't know what was happening, but they saw to me seeing the greats, you see. Now, they didn't... Well, there were bands there, too, singers and dancers. But uh, that was, uh, on my, my mind, a lot of impressions to me. Also, at the house, they had records by Fletcher Henderson. I didn't know who it was. But this was going on all the time. And then, of course, the records disappeared as I grew old. Mm -hmm. well, I didn't know nothing about Fletcher Henderson. And I went to high school, and uh, I, heard some, I heard something about Tatum. Then I got interested in Duke Elton, Fats Waller, and then I heard Fletcher Henderson. And that was it again. Since it was natural for me to like Fletcher Henderson, since I'd been listening at it all the while, probably over in the cradle. So then, I, in comparing all the different bands, I found the Fletcher Henderson band represented discipline. Mm -hmm. And everybody in there played like one man. And today, if you get the records of Fletcher Henderson, you will hear them playing. Like me and I supposed to play. They're not playing like humans because there are no errors in there, you see. Mm -hmm. They playing wonderful, they playing jazz. Now Fletcher Henderson, um, he, he was unselfish and he was instrumental in uh, developing a lot of different artists like Bessie Smith, Ethel, all of them. Mm -hmm. He was over in there. He was just go out looking for black talent. He put them in his band. It was said you put somebody in Fletcher Henderson's band and then if they could stay in there, they could play with anybody. You see, because you had, they had a soul like an aristocracy of jazz. They met everybody play in that band. You couldn't get in there <laughs> unless you came up to certain standards. You had sight read. See, Fletcher wrote there, he wrote the bass parts, he wrote the drum parts, he wrote the piano parts. Everything was complete, not like today, where did somebody write some chords, the instant music thing. And they don't even have a cross written out, just the name of it, and you play that, and you don't have the bass part, you get your over there. Some teenagers run and they get the bass part and they play that. Mm -hmm. And they don't know no better, you know. I said, I was going out and get some teenagers to try to see what I could do to help them. But you know, they're all egotistical, and they're all rebellious, and they don't respect older black people. They don't even respect their fathers. You have been known to work with electronic instruments uh, long before it became popular back in the 50s. And I'm just wondering, uh, how has this uh, been used in your music? Well, realizing uh, I can see the future, you see. Mm -hmm. I saw the Space Age. In fact, I was the first one that said Space Age. I got a song. Space Age is here to stay. It was probably written 25 years ago. Before they sent Spoodnik and all that, I was doing it. Mm -hmm. And I, I just played in in black neighborhoods. I was trying to awaken them to this fact. But I got a lot of ridicule from them. Um, because they said it was ridiculous. A black minister told me, well, man is not going to the moon because it's not in the Bible. I told him, yes, they are. They're going other places, too. So you sound like a prophet. Well, I'm P-R-O-F-I-T, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Where are the artists headed? Where are we headed? It seems that now you've got what you might call the, the new music, and every time, you, every certain, every few years, every 20 years or so, someone's coming out with something new, I guess because no one has heard it before, but it's, I guess it's been there before. But where are we headed? You know, you have like, like I say, a certain group of musicians over here says, well, we've got the new music, and then you talk to you, you say, well, you've been to Egypt, and you know about uh, what is, as opposed to what is going to be. Uh, is it, are we gonna come together at, at all? Especially as it relates to, the, to music, if, you know, if indeed music is a, is a universal language that you talked about. You, you never make it unless, you, unless God sends someone to help you. You can't make it. The white race wouldn't make it if it hadn't been God been on that side, and doing that side. But if that foot slip, you won't be, you know. I'm afraid it's gonna slip if they're not careful. Because everything they got, they got it from God, not from their power, not from guns, not from money, but simply because God was for them. And it wasn't for black people. And still isn't. I be worried I saw some black in the election on there one day in Philadelphia. They were talking something they had a minister, a black minister on there. So he said the black minister said, God is not gonna help black people. Hmm. Reverend Sun Moon came over and he said, God is gonna send a savior to the nations, but not the black people. But see, black people didn't question that. I tried to reach him and ask, what do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. He said, God's gonna send them something else, but not a savior. This on the chain, you know, in Madison Square Garden. Now I notice all these different people come up, you know, any man come up talking about God, I investigate it. Cause it's subject to talk through any nation, you know, even a little child, so you have to watch it, you know. Are musicians free? Well, freedom means dead. Yeah, I would say they are, but I'm going to deal with freedom. They said mm -hmm. I'm dealing with discipline. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I stay up all night writing one song. I'm trying to recreate Fletcher Henson's music. I have to listen carefully and get every note correct. I have to really sometimes contact their spirits and write the music the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times it sounds right to me, but my spirit don't feel right. Mm -hmm. And I go and say, it's something wrong. It sounds right, and I finally found one note that they played that I couldn't hear. And that's where my band is sounding more and more like Fletcher Hemsworth, because they dealt with dynamics. Mm. And sometimes when they make a low note, you couldn't barely hear it, but it was there. And if you didn't put that note in there, the song, it's just like if you're talking, you leave a word out. You can't leave the note out. So as I put these notes in there, it develops musicians more and more, and they can have appreciation of some people really were black man and sacrificed for it and died for it, and run rings around the world, proving that they weren't inferior. Sun Ra and his orchestra, Cairo, Egypt, December 17, 1971, the Balloon Theater. <laughs> 